guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be filming a what would I buy uh, if I had a thousand dollars. This was a video idea that was suggested to me by Truly Tara when I sort of put up my, hey guys, I'm filming tomorrow. What do you want to see? Originally, I wasn't going to film this video today because I thought it was going to take me a little bit longer to really pick and choose what products I wanted, um, but then when I had actually got down to it, it was pretty quick. So rather than doing a general, like if you had a thousand dollars to spend on makeup, what would you buy? Um, and by general, I mean like with any brand because that would take some serious time. That would mean going through, you know, Sephora's website, also Mac's website, because even though Sephora carries Mac, they don't carry everything that Mac has to offer. And it would mean going through, you know, Juvia's Place, Beautylish, um, what, whatever, uh, drugstore brands. Uh, there's a big part of me that wants to start buying ColourPop again. Um, <laughs> I'm so torn though, because I, ba like, I, I spent so long raging out over them that, uh, I don't want to be like considered a complete hypocrite, but my rage has subsided and they always put out really fun collections and stuff. I actually just started following them on Instagram again. I'm going off on a segue. Anyway, rather than doing that, I decided just to do a, if I had $1,000 to spend at Sephora, what would I get? Now, if you guys have been with me for any length of time, you will know that I am not one to really split hairs over high priced makeup. I sort of, have this horrible ability to look at a product and and just like break it away from the price which is good and also bad it is bad because i will you know how many people have you heard that are beauty gurus that get all this free pr makeup that get the natasha denona palette sent to them that say they're amazing but would i recommend somebody pay that price for them hi there i'm that idiot that uh i went out and i spent that price on them. I, you know, any bit of makeup that I own, either I bought for myself or was a gift from like a family member or a friend or something like that. Most of it I bought for myself. Um, so I've, I just have this like unique, which is a bad thing, ability to sort of just get things regardless of the price, which is really, really bad. So for this, I tried as hard as I could to pick things that you know, in saying that I want them, I probably am not going to run out tomorrow and actually go get them. They're either things that are way, way outside my price range or things that I haven't heard enough about to be willing to get, um, that sort of thing. And I don't know if anybody else is like me, but the second that I got into this mind frame that was like, you've got a thousand dollars that is not your own to spend on makeup, I went straight for like the high, high price point brands. Um, so I have my phone with me just because I did my shopping on the Sephora app. So I'm just going to be looking at it just to remind myself of what I picked out. But I'll also put like little pictures here so you guys can see them. We'll talk about like how well they're rated and that kind of thing because you know, I'm going to make this into a real thing. Also, weirdly enough, I filmed earlier today and I was like, my hair is a disaster. It's not doing anything. And it's being all like fun and wavy and like good now. I don't know what's going on. Also, if you have an interest and probably not in seeing this very, very easy um, makeup look, I did a can you do your makeup in 10 minutes or less makeup challenge. This was the result. If you want to find out if I made it in time, I will put a link in the description box below. I'm scooting myself kind of over here because I always find that like I'll be sitting right here and then I'll want to put like a picture here but I'll cut my face off so I'm gonna leave a nice open corner right up there so we can do it so the first thing in my what would I buy if I had a thousand dollars now this is not including for me uh, this is how I did it I did not include tax or shipping I just did base price thousand dollars because that would just require me to go into a checkout and I fear doing that, that I'm gonna end up actually spending that kind of money. So before I start talking about what I have, my final like total was $1,003. I know I went slightly over, but I felt like you guys could maybe forgive me for that. So the first item is a Natasha Denona palette. This is the eyeshadow 28 palette. 
that comes in two color combinations. So you can get a purple blue combination or the one that I love is a green brown combination. Just has so many really pretty neutrals, nice greeny tones. There's some more like teal blue tones in it. I love Natasha Denona's formula. It is one of my favorites in eyeshadow. I think that they do it so, so well. The reason that I have never bit the bullet and bought this particular palette, even though I have been very tempted several, several times is because it retails for $305 which is ridiculous you get 28 shadows so like that ends up let me like actually get get all like calculate here that ends up being about $10.80 a shadow which is like kind of a lot I don't know it's not completely unheard of but like $305 is a lot to spend on a palette. It has 142 reviews and having said that it's got about four and a half stars on it. I know videos that I've watched of people that do have these palettes absolutely adore it but again it's a lot to spend on an eyeshadow palette. Like you could get I mean even just talking high end you could get probably like five or six really good quality eyeshadow palettes for the price that you would be paying for this one. It really probably isn't worth it and I've been looking at it for years now and just have never bit the bullet. All right, so the next product is from Viseart. Now, I've never tried anything Viseart, but I do see uh, a lot of, again, people on YouTube that talk about Viseart shadows and talk about how great they are, but they're a little bit pricey, so this was my opportunity to maybe give one a shot. So the palette that I chose was the Aperol Spritz eyeshadow palette. So this comes with 12 eyeshadows. They're very, very neutral. There's some shimmers there, some mattes. How dumb am I? Originally, when I saw this, I thought they were calling it the Aerosol Spritz palette which is stupid uh, for several reasons because how do you pick color combinations in an aerosol spritz? And also I can't read. So this has only 16 reviews, four stars. I think that this is a fairly new product. It does say new in big letters, at least when I'm filming this, but I'm just really drawn to the colors. They're very, very neutral, very wearable. It looks like a really good palette to maybe travel with. I'm not too sure how big it is. It says that it's 0.42 ounces or 12 grams, which doesn't seem that large. So it might be good for that. And unlike other Viseart palettes that have like the clear plastic, um, like they're the plastic palette and then the lid is like a clear plastic or acrylic lid, this looks like it's got like a bit sturdier of a case to it. Again, it looks really pretty and it is retailing for, I don't remember if I said $55, which is actually not completely unreasonable for an eyeshadow palette. I think a lot of the Urban Decay, um, what are they called? Oh my God. Naked palettes. That's what they're called. I'm like, what are they called? So like, I think a lot of those palettes are in that range of like the 50 to $70 range. And I think there's 12 shadows in each of those. So it's not so, so expensive that I couldn't just get it on its own. But since I've never tried a Viseart shadow, I would want to personally like make sure it was something I liked. I, I've never seen these palettes in my Sephora. Mind you, I haven't been in a Sephora since like February or something like that. So it's been a long time, but if I could like swatch it and touch it and feel the formula, I'd be a lot more willing to just like get it. But because I can't, it's just sort of something that's in the back of my mind on a wish list. And like I said, every time that I hear people talk about them, they say how good they are, but that they're not really worth the price. But like I said, I don't think that one's that expensive, but I did see other 12 pan eyeshadow palettes that were like $100, $105. They're double the size, so it also makes me wonder how small this one is. Next thing is the Tatcha, the Liquid Silk Canvas Featherweight Protective Primer. Now, there is a mini size kind of available for $28, but it's sold out, and as I was doing this and making the cart, I just only picked items that were in stock. Um, considering how strict I was about, like, you can only pick items that are in stock on the website, I did go over, so whatever. This is something that I've been really wanting to try since they came out with it. I love the Silk Canvas Protective Primer, the original one, like the little cream one. I have a mini of that and I adore it. Now these are expensive products. I, I know I told you how much the mini one is. The full size one of this is $68. Um, and for me, I'm torn because if it has the same effect that the cream does, 
I don't know if I need a liquid because I feel like a liquid would be good if you were putting it all over your face. It would make it really, really fluid, really blend in, melt with your skin. But considering I only ever really put that product like in my T-zone area and then down along my nose where some of my pores are a little bit bigger that I'm trying to blur out before I put makeup on so that at least the makeup doesn't sink into them and like amplify them. I don't know that I need this product, but something I did notice is that on Sephora online, in terms of the bonus items, like the rewards items, you can actually pick a very, very small size of this as a reward item. So say, you know, me for example, if I decide, and I doubt that I will, um, that I want a couple items from Sephora that I'm gonna order online. It's also four times the rewards points right now for me up until July 26th, so that is also very, very tempting. I could always, you know, get a little sample of that, try it out and decide if it's really, really worth it. That's always my favorite way to try products. And obviously it's really difficult right now because even though like malls and stores are reopening, I, Gosh, I'm going on a segue. It's already been like 11 minutes and I've talked about three products. Since Ontario has entered phase two, I know certain parts of Ontario are going into phase three of reopening. Uh, either they already have or they're going to. My area is not. I live in the GTA, so we are not there yet. We normally have been following behind about two weeks behind. Um, but even having said that, like, Tom and I are still quite skeptical of some things. Like him and I are not so missing going to restaurants that we have gone and found ourselves on a patio. Him and I honestly aren't big fans of eating outdoors at restaurants anyways. We would prefer to be inside, especially with all of the patios that are like expanding to accommodate more guests. They're expanding into parking lots and just thinking of how hot it's been here lately, it's been like high 20s, low 30s, plus the Humidex making it feel like it's in the 40s. Like you walk outside and you get like slapped in the face by the humidity. Thinking about that and the hot sun beating on the asphalt, it just sounds uncomfortable. I'm more than happy to go like drink on a patio, but I'm not a big drinker as it is. So we haven't really like gone out. So having said that with like the Sephora thing, like I have not found myself in a Sephora. And since everything is changing, I don't know if you can you know, if they have testers available anymore because that's a really, really easy way to um, transmit the virus, you know, by contact. I don't know if they're offering samples anymore. They're probably not doing like applications anymore. I haven't really looked into it very much, but this is one of those products that like, knowing that I could get like a little rewards, reward size sample of it might be really good for me. I'm gonna stop branting now. Also, out of 1,370 reviews, it looks like it's got 4.75 like, stars. Next thing I am really interested in, and I have been for a while, is a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette. It's a luxury eyeshadow palette. The ones that I was drawn to for a while were the ones that were supposed to be for specific eye colors. I can't find those anymore, but there is another one that I really liked, and it is in the color Rebel, so it's like these khaki greens a little bit of a light gold kind of would look really nice and smoky i love that those kind of olivey khaki tones just in like recent years along with like the more mustardy golden yellows have really been my thing in both like clothing and makeup and accessories and stuff like that like i've been really into that so like i said I don't know if I did say these retail for $66, so it's a four shadow pan. I tried really hard not to make this like, what would I buy only eyeshadows? And it was really difficult. So it only has 212 reviews, four stars. These are something that I have heard are not worth the price, to be honest. An eyeshadow quad for $66, that is a lot of money to spend on very little product in my opinion. This really puts into perspective that Viseart palette because this palette is 0.18 ounces or 5.1 grams. So it is less than half the size of that Viseart palette and it costs more money. But Charlotte Tilbury is one of those things where, I don't know, I feel like the products that I have of hers, I love, but I feel like it's kind of hit or miss and not everything is really worth the hype and worth the uh, cost, but what do I know? 
Again, this is something I'm just really drawn to the colors. I'm really interested to try the formula, but I don't know if I'm interested enough to spend $66 of my own money. The next brand that I went after was Hourglass. Hourglass makes amazing products, uh, particularly I would say face products. We're talking like their blushes, their highlighters, their bronzers. Those are sort of like their primers, foundations, where I think that they are a lot like, I'm not trying to say like they can't do eyeshadows and they can't do mascaras, but you certainly hear a lot more about the face side than the eye side or even the lip side of their brand. So something that I am really curious to try and I might actually end up just buying one, um, even though it's $52 is one of the ambient lighting blushes. I have never had one of their blushes. I've had their uh, ambient lighting bronzer, which I love and I have had one of I've got mm, I've got one of like the face powders I can't remember for the life of me what it's called it's like dim light or something like that and then at one point I had one of their like strobe highlighters which I ended up decluttering because it wasn't my favorite but the blushes look gorgeous particularly for me the one that is in incandescent Electra it's a cool beach beach I can't speak a cool peach blush blended with incandescent strobe light for a celestial glow it looks really really stunning in the pan it looks really really pretty on like the picture of the model they have there's a lot of colors on offer I think there are 14 total I know three of those are mini so let's say 10 or 11 total um, color options this was just the one that like I was drawn the most to and out of 1922 reviews it has like 4.5 4.6 stars so it really makes me feel like it'd be good and like I said I've tried a lot of their face powders and I love them they're beautiful they have the most beautiful texture they sit so nicely on the face they just give you this gorgeous gorgeous glow I actually feel like the blush I have on today is maybe like a dupe for that style of a blush I'm wearing the L'Oreal true match blush today uh, in N3-4 which I got a while ago uh, doing a like drugstore dupes video I'm wearing that today and it just gives you this beautiful like peachy glow and I feel like this would do a similar thing I'd be really curious to try that out Alrighty, so the next thing is a Dior product it is the backstage glow face palette in shade 002 glitz they do have another shade that has a more pinky style blush a darker bronzer that sort of thing but for me um this one was just like the quad was just gorgeous the three highlighty kind of colors well i would say two highlighty colors on the top there's like a gold and what looks like a champagne -y kind of a color and then a nice peachy either blush or highlight depending on what you're going for and a nice light bronzing kind of color um they just look gorgeous this is a 59 dollars value dior is expensive i would put like brands like dior guerlain givenchy um marc jacobs like those kind like all up in there because i feel like those are also brands that are known for like their high fashion clothing it's not like it's just you know Natasha Denona. Natasha Denona, as far as I know, does not make clothes. She just makes makeup. So this is one of those like brands that has like a foot in the door everywhere. So it is a little bit more pricey, but it looks absolutely stunning. The colors just are gorgeous. It looks super glowy, super like natural, buildable. Oh man, I'm so into it. And out of 722 reviews, it has almost five stars, which is amazing. Um, I don't know it's just something that I'm really really interested in trying and again much like the hourglass blush this is not so expensive and out of my price range that I wouldn't buy it to be honest it's been in my cart a few times and at the last minute I've pulled it out but there you go so next I have a couple and when I say a couple holy crap I've got four Guerlain products again this is one of those really really expensive brands that makes beautiful products but like on your own dime are they worth it I don't really know so the first one is a terracotta light natural healthy glow and radiance bronzing powder that is a mouthful it is a $64 powder comes in four shades the one I'm the most interested in is natural warm there is a light warm which is just a little too light in my opinion because this is the kind of like it, it, it with the wheel that it kind of looks like it's got some like 
a light bronzer, a darker bronzer, and a blush. It looks like it would be really, really pretty kind of slapped on the cheek area and that sort of thing. So for me, that seems like the kind of product I would want in the summertime um, when I'm already a little bit more tanned, when I want some glow. So that's why I was going more for the natural one. There's also a dark one, or it's called Deep Golden, which is really pretty. And then there's a cool tone one for any of those of us, uh, not so much me, that are more into like a cool toned bronzing kind of color than a warm toned. I feel like I don't want to say the majority of people, but me for sure, I am more into the warm tones. So we're talking like warm eyeshadow palettes, warm tone foundations, that sort of things. But I, I mean, there are definitely some cool tone eyeshadow palettes that are absolutely gorgeous. So this only has 34 reviews. It's pretty highly reviewed uh, at about 4.5 stars. But when you've only got 34 reviews, like who's to really say? And $64 is a lot for a bronzing powder. I mean, having said that, do I have bronzing powders that are probably worth $64? I think I do. But do I need another one? I don't really know. Next one is the Meteorites Primer Perfecting Pearls. This is something that I have hemmed and hawed about buying so many times because again, beauty gurus that get these products sent to them always say how amazing it is, but then you, they're, <sighs> But they also say like if they didn't get it sent to them, they don't know if they would buy it on their own. It is supposed to be super hydrating, radiance boosting, a little bit color correcting, which are all things that I'm into. I love, I have very, very dry skin. I love a really, really good moisturizing primer, something with a little glow. I'm sure you can see that I am a pretty glowy makeup kind of girl. I, I just think it looks very natural. It makes your skin look super, super healthy. And I really like that. Um, color correcting honestly like I hate I always hate saying when things like aren't an issue that I have because I I don't ever want to sound like braggy or anything like that like I, I remember once a very 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 long <laughs> here's another segue but I remember saying once a very very long time ago when I was in university I was sitting at a table with one of my then best friends um that's a whole other story is, you know, what happened with that friendship. But she was very much like the kind of person that like all eyes needed to be on her. And that's fine. Like you, there's definitely those kind of people and they need to have friends that are, you know, I, and again, like, I don't want to say this as like a bad thing, but like, I'm not one of those people people like I actually like whenever people sing to me for my birthday in public I get like anxiety because I hate having people like look at me which is so funny because I have a YouTube channel but it's very very easy for me to sit here in my room by myself and talk to an inanimate object knowing that eventually it will go out and other people will see it but um it's very much in my own kind of control and whatever but anyway so they her and somebody else were talking about Accutane um, and how they had to take it and I asked what it was because I'd never heard of it before I didn't know what it was honestly for some reason I thought it had something to do with contacts I don't know where that came from but I said oh what's what's that and they said oh it's like really strong medicine for acne and I said oh okay that's it like I have this like bad problem with a filter where I say things and I don't mean anything by them but they can come across like kind of offensive or like conceited. So all I said was, oh, okay, I'd, I never had an acne problem, so I didn't know what it was. And it was like a big issue that I'd even sort of said that. Like, it's like, well, you know, some people just have no pro like, and it was just like, oh God, I'm so sorry. Anyway, so why was I talking about this? I was gonna say that because this primer, let's get back to the makeup is color correcting. I don't have, like I've got some redness definitely in my nose, but I find that it shines through even when I have makeup on. It's just sort of something I've accepted. But other than that, like my skin on its own isn't too, too bad. Of course I have my problems. I'm very dry. I get scaly patches. My under eyes are always looks like I'm carrying like 50 pound bags under there because they have such bad dark circles. And that's just because my sleep is messed up but I don't carry a lot of like redness or discoloration or anything like that in my face. So the color correcting, I might not need it, but whatever, an extra thing is always nice. But again, this is so expensive. Out of 111 reviews, it has just over four stars. I just don't know that it's worth it over 
a couple other primers because there's definitely some drugstore primers too like the l'oreal glotion i love that for like a highlighting uh like strobing kind of a primer i love the cover girl primers that are supposed to be like dupes for all the smashbox ones those are great there's other primers and things like that that do what this one is claiming to do but it looks so pretty i kind of want to try it Next thing, again, Guerlain is a terracotta highlighter stick. You guys know I love stick highlighters. My favorite one is my I Want Candy highlighter from Too Faced. Too Faced makes some of the best stick highlighters. I've also got like a NARS one. Uh, there's Benefit What's Up, uh, all those kind of things. But this one just looks gorgeous. The one I'm interested in is in the color Nude. And I don't know, it just looks like the most beautiful, subtle, kind of like soft kiss of sun glow it is a 62 dollars item which is pricey again i don't know why the gurn lamp products don't have that many reviews maybe it's because they're so pricey that like a lot of people can't afford to buy them and those that can afford them don't have time to write reviews on products um so out of 25 reviews this got about four and a half stars so that is promising it says it has a uh, jojoba extract, so it's supposed to high, be very hydrating as well, which is great because there's nothing worse than like a stick highlighter that is drying and like cracks up your skin and stuff like that. You want it to be very like luminous and that kind of thing. And for me, highlighting and dryness don't go together. Um, it's so pretty, but again, do I need it? No. Is it likely that I have another highlighter that is like virtually the same as that in my drawer already? Most likely. Last Guerlain product is a Terracotta Jolie Tint Foundation. So this is claiming to be a, uh, oh, it says a formula that combines the perfecting power of foundation and the comfort of beautifying, of a beautifying texture, providing a radiant, healthy looking finish. So this looks to me more like a BBCC kind of cream, less so a full coverage foundation. It only comes in three shades, so you can get light, medium, or natural. So the one that I have in my cart is in the natural shade. It just looks like it would be like glowy. What does it say on it? It says beautifying foundation, sun-kissed healthy glow. Those sound all like things that I want. This is a $73 foundation. That is a lot of money. Um, out of 78 reviews, it has four and a bit stars. So again, it sounds like it would be okay, but I don't know. It says under similar products, it's listing the Clinique Even Better Glow Light Reflecting Makeup, the Guerlain L'Essential Natural Glow Foundation, Charlotte Tilbury Fa Magic Foundation, uh, Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance, Lancome. Oh my god. It's listing a bunch of like glowy foundations as like uh, comparable. It sounds like something I'd be super into. I'm not a big fan of really fat coverage that's not a word really full coverage foundations uh every time I try and use them they end up just looking cakey and horrible so I am more into a natural finish a lighter finish so that sounds like it could be right up my alley all right so we only have two more products so the first one is a Marc Jacobs Beauty enamored hydrating lip gloss stick I have just recently over the past couple months gotten really into lip glosses prior to that I actually was like I would bash lip gloss all the time just because I, I'm not a big fan of when it like gets stuck in your hair and then that goes like all over your face. I just don't like the stickiness and that kind of thing. But just lately, and I think that's, it's something kind of coming along as I am uh, like getting a little bit older is that I like a lip gloss because it's a little more natural. It's a little bit less upkeep. You can kind of just slap it on and it's good. It's not like, you know, a red, red lip that as it starts to wear, it looks really bad. So you're constantly reapplying or doing touch-ups and things like that. I find that lipsticks are just like a no fuss way to go. So I meant lip glosses are a no fuss way to go. So this is a lip gloss stick. So it's in like a stick, like a lipstick. Oh my God, I can't even talk. It's in a lipstick style, but it is a lip gloss, which sounds really, really cool to me because one of the things that I don't love about lip glosses is I don't like the wand. I feel like you have less control. For me to get a stick and just put it on would be so, so much easier. So the shade that I am really, really into is Moco Chocolata. Lata. Moco Chocolata. It's a pinky nude. It is $38, which is actually 
not that bad. It shows two other colors on the Sephora website, but like if you switch, flip through and look at the swatches, it looks like there's eight total. They're just not on Sephora's website, at least the one that I have. Um, out of 2,200 reviews, it has almost five stars, which sounds amazing. It says it is a sheer lip gloss with an irresistible melt-on cushiony texture. Um, I think that's another one of those ones that like will actually go from my what would I buy to hey, I bought it kind of list. The last product on here is from NARS. I... The thing is, is I've been back and forth on NARS website uh, lately and there are a, sorry, I know people don't like it when I play with my hair. Um, there are a lot of products on their website that I want, but unfortunately like Sephora doesn't carry all of NARS products. They carry select products. So I feel like if you're ever really in love with a brand and you want to know everything that brand has to offer, you have to go straight to the source. Like Sephora is a nice like middleman in between but they don't have everything. So the one thing that I did see that I was really, really into was the Afterglow Eyeshadow Palette. It is a $78 value. It is limited edition, apparently, and out of 61 reviews, it has, I mean, it looks like five stars. I think there's like the little tip at the end that is not there. I have tried NARS eyeshadows before. I have one of their little Voyageur palettes and I love it. I think they're fantastic. Um, they are a little pricey, but these colors look gorgeous. It kind of reminds me a lot of like the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice palette in terms of some of the colors. You've got that super bright pink, a lot of like really, really like bronzy kind of shimmer, some champagne, some gold, really, really nice neutral colors here. It just looks like a very, very wearable palette, especially for the summertime. Like these colors to me look like a really pretty like sunrise kind of a thing. I'm really, really digging it. Um, again, it's not so expensive that I wouldn't actually consider buying this, but it's a little pricey, $78 for 12 shadows. So it says that they are 0 0.04 ounces times 12. So each shadow is 0 0.04 ounces. So that is everything. So like I said, I did this before taxes. I'm just curious as to what it would be after taxes, probably expensive. Taxes are 13%, so it would be like $1,100. But before taxes, I spent $1,000.03, which is a lot of money, but I got 12 things out of it. And some of these things are things that you actually may see pop up in my collection in the future. And other things are things that I could only dream to own. So this was really fun for me to get to do. If you guys have like other sites that you wanna see me do in other price ranges, like maybe like uh, you can spend I don't know, $500 at Ulta kind of thing, or on Mac, that sort of thing. Let me know, this was really fun for me to do. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, comment down below, let me know what you would get if you had $1,000 to spend at Sephora, or if you've done a video like this, link it below, I love watching it. If you're not already and you want to be, then subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.